Well, good morning, North Highland Church. It is so good to see you in God's house this morning. How many of you came and you say, I believe God has a word for me this morning? If so, say amen. amen. If so, let's go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise and anticipation. There we go. We are finishing up our series, our identity series on Daniel because we are approaching the Easter season, Palm Sunday and Easter coming up. But we are wrapping up our identity series where we're looking out and we're remembering who we are and whose we are and who we belong to. Our identity is found in Christ. Uh, we're really excited. We're continuing. Last week we talked about how to handle yourself when you go through hard times. It's good to know that the Bible teaches us how to handle ourselves. When we go through hard times, aren't we glad he gives us hope in those hard times? We're going to continue. This is kind of a part two of how to handle yourself in hard times. And what we're going to learn today is a, it is an, both an encouragement and a challenge. And it's this simple phrase, how to practice patience with God's plan. <laughs> how many of you guys know God's plan is in God's time. Sometimes we want God's plan on our time. <laughs> but how many you know God works his plan in his time? Hmm. So here we are. How do we practice that spiritual gift of patience when we're waiting on God's plan to unfold in our life? If you would, grab your Bibles this morning. We're getting straight into Scripture this morning. We're not messing around. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're not messing around today. Say, I ain't messing around. <laughs> Go ahead and grab your Bible. Turn on your Bible. We're going to look at Jeremiah 29. Did I promise you we continue this last week, didn't I? I did. I did. Keeping my word. Jeremiah 29. We're going to continue. We stopped just short of Jeremiah 29, 11, but we're learning about Daniel and his time in exile and the Babylonian captivity. And the reason why we're looking at Jeremiah right now is because Jeremiah wrote an encouraging word to Daniel. He said, listen, this is how you need to handle yourself when you're going through hard times. This is how you need to be patient. We learned some practical stuff last week. This week, we're just going to hear some encouraging truth. How many of you guys are glad that the Lord encourages us this morning? Amen. Jeremiah 29, we're going to begin reading in verse 11. If you see it, say amen. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Man, that's nice. <laughs> that's encouraging. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You believe that the Lord is able to be found today. That's good news this morning. Lord, speak to us today through your word. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. So let's look at a couple things. We're going to jump right into it. I mean, Daniel's sitting there at the end of his life, and he's like, man, I'm still in captivity. I need some encouragement. Man, uh, uh, the Babylonians are still in charge. We're still, the home team is still lost. Lord, what's going on? So what does he do? He grabs the scrolls of Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, send us some encouragement. Let's be encouraged by it. And then Jeremiah says, listen, I got a word from God from you. We learned last week, hey, man, listen, that exile is not going to last two years. It's going to last 70 years. But he says, but don't lose hope. Why? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So the first thing we're going to look at today is the fact that God says, I know the plans I have for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Aren't we glad that uh, God is not reacting or responding to the enemy in Scripture? God is not responding or reacting to the Babylonians. God does not react or respond. In fact, God just evolves his plan. He just lets his plan unfold. He doesn't respond to the enemy. He says, listen, I have a plan. He is not reactionary. You know, sometimes we get reactionary, don't we? 
But God says, I am unfolding my plan. And I love it because he says, I know the plans I have for you. He says, I know them. Now, it's an encouragement today that God knows the plans. But some of us this morning sure wish we could let, you know, God let us in on those plans, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's encouraging this morning that the Lord is thinking of us. The Lord is remembering us. That in the cosmos that God says, listen, I, I'm actually thinking about you. Uh, I got a plan for your life. But sometimes we always, you know, we're not in on all the details of that plan, are we? So it's encouraging that he's got the plan, but sometimes our reaction is, it goes a couple different ways. When we don't know the plan, sometimes we, we get into, uh, some of y'all might identify with this this morning. When you don't know the plan, you start getting a little controlling. <laughs> I got any control freaks in the room. <laughs> you say, I, I'll trust you, Lord, if I could just know the plan. Like, Lord, I, I, if you would just give me the details, then I'll believe. <laughs> If you could just tell me everything beforehand, I will trust and I will follow you because we want to control things. We want to know all the details. Then we'll buy in 100%. But that's not how faith works, is it? And, then, and some of us, when we don't know the plan, we're not a control freak. Some of us fill up with this terrible word called anxiety where all of a sudden it's not about God has a plan. It's what if the plan goes awry? What if the plan doesn't work out? What if this happens? What if this fails? What if this doesn't go? And all of a sudden, all the what ifs of worst case scenario plans play out in your head. How many of you guys say, I might identify with that a little bit this morning. I, got, I, I know what it's like to have a little bit of anxiety. But I got good news this morning. It doesn't just say, I know the plans I have for you. The, the word says this, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So in other words, he's saying, listen, not only do I know the plan, not only do I have a plan, but I declare that plan to happen. Because sometimes, man, when we're going through life, do we feel like, hey, Lord, doesn't feel like your plan. <laughs> Hey, I'm looking around my life and my family, maybe my work, uh, maybe what's going on with my health, and we think, Lord, is this your plan? How many of you guys have ever felt that way? You say, man, is this really God's plan? But God says, I have a plan for you. But it's going to take you walking in faith. Uh, I'm also reminded of the story of Abraham today. I love this because sometimes God has a plan, but he doesn't give us all the details of that plan. Just like when Abraham, God said, Abraham, listen, I want you to go. I've got a plan. I'm going to actually create a people, God's people, and I need you to go to a country. And you know what Abraham said? Abraham said, yeah, I'll go. Where do you want me to go? And you know what God said? Just start walking. <laughs> and Abraham's like, well, where am I going, God? And he says, once you go, I'll start showing you on the way. How many of you guys know that took a lot of faith? Sometimes God's plan takes faith when we don't know, hey, God, what are you doing? And he says, listen, can you trust me with the plan? I have a plan. Can you trust me? How do you be patient with God's plan? First of all, it's just realizing, okay, Lord, I may not be able to see the plan, but I know you have a plan. So having patience with God's plan. I love the second part of this is he says, listen, I also, not only do I have a plan, but my plan is to prosper you. Man, doesn't that sound good this morning? Prosper, and another verse says this, prosper or peace. Another translation, part two, number two says peace. Now, we're Americans. We love prosperity, don't we? Look, when I, when I see that word prosperity, I don't know about you, but I get, I'm like, Prosperity? My, where did your mind immediately go? Somebody said money. <laughs> and then we go, to, we go from prosperity to money to yes, Lord. <laughs> we receive that, right? We see jackpots, dollar signs, no whammies, no whammies, stop, collect $200, pass, go. We see all that stuff, right? It's a wonderful word. But can I encourage you this morning that that word prosperity is so much more rich in the Hebrew that really the writer, when uh, Jeremiah was writing this encouraging note to Daniel, says, listen, you're going to face lion's dens. 
You guys are going to face fiery furnaces. And you know what I, I want you to be encouraged is God has a plan. And his plan is to provide you peace. Because you know what that original Hebrew word is? It's translated prosperity in the NIV. But the King James says peace. Because you know what the Hebrew word is? Shalom. You know, what the, you know what the Jewish people, every time they see somebody, when they greet somebody, even to this day, you know what they say? Shalom. You think they're saying jackpot to each other? <laughs> you, think they're ta- you think that's what they're talking about? You know, cha-ching, the casino, jackpot, winning, right? You think that's what they're talking about? No, they're talking about shalom. This is a wonderful word in Hebrew that means wholeness, wellness, completeness foundation and and basically God is saying listen I've got a plan for you and it what does it entail it entails complete wholeness complete fullness shalom peace wholeness fullness did you know uh this morning this world looks for peace in so many different ways so many different places sadly you know More money does not equal more peace. More money sometimes means, to y'all said more problems, exactly. But why do we keep looking in the wrong places for peace? More money doesn't provide peace. More drugs don't provide peace. More success doesn't provide peace. More gratification doesn't provide peace. More just selfish ambition doesn't provide peace in our life. More pursuing our own heart doesn't provide peace. God says there's one place that we find peace, and it's when we actually seek Jesus, who is the prince of So God's saying, listen, i got a plan for you, and it's a plan that's filled with peace. It's a plan where all of a sudden, on the inside of your soul, you're going to feel centered. I read this quote, and I want to encourage you by it. I mean, I was just like, wow, this is incredible. Listen to what this definition is of peace. Because it really really deepens the meaning of this. Not just financial prosperity. Listen to what biblical peace looks like. It's this. Here's the quote. It's the webbing together of God, humanity, and all creation, and justice, fulfillment, and delight. That's what the Hebrew meaning of shalom is. We call it peace, but it means far more than mere peace of mind or ceasefire between enemies. In the Bible, shalom means universal flourishing, wholeness, delight, a rich state of affairs in which natural needs are satisfied, natural gifts fully enjoyed, a state of affairs that inspires joyful wonder as Its creator and savior opens doors and welcomes the creatures in whom he delights. Shalom, in other words, is putting things the way they ought to be. Wow. Putting things the way they ought to be. Shalom. On earth as it is in heaven. How many of you say, you know what, I would love a little bit of shalom, peace in my heart. I'd love a little peace in my family. I'd love a little peace in my wholeness in my body. Because that's what God's saying to us. God's saying, listen, you may be going through a hard time, but I have a plan and it's to provide you peace. Aren't we glad that Lord provides us peace this morning, amen? The third thing he says is this. He says, I have a plan. Thank God he has a plan. He said, it's to provide you with peace and wholeness. And it's for a hope and a future. See, Daniel and his friends, we talked about it over the last couple weeks. Daniel and his friends had to face so many challenges, right? They, fa- they faced fiery furnaces. They faced lion's dens. And all of a sudden, they needed an encouragement that says, listen, I've got a plan for you, and I'm working it out. I'm working it out. But let me tell you, my eye is on the future, and there is hope in the future. So here's what we find, and it's beautiful. Daniel's sitting there, 
at the end of his life. And he's kind of reflecting. He's reflecting on all of the things that he's been through. And he's, he's looking at what Jeremiah sent him. And Jeremiah said, yeah, it's gonna last 70 years, this hardship, this trial. But guess what? After 70 years, I'm gonna start bringing my people back. Do you know God's always faithful to his promises? Sure enough, man, it's just really cool when the whole Testament just weaves together. Jeremiah writes a letter to Daniel and says, listen, don't give up hope because God's got a plan. He's got a hope. He's going to give you like peace and he's got a hopeful future for you. Just don't give up hope. And Daniel's like, man, okay, I can't give up hope. And then what, what God's doing, Daniel can't even see that God's stirring a guy named Nehemiah at that very same time. Nehemiah goes to the ruler. Remember, after the Babylonians, it's the Persians. And Nehemiah says, listen, uh, God's telling me I gotta go back and rebuild the, the temple. Guess what? After 70 years, God calls Nehemiah from exile to start rebuilding God's temple. God said, I have a plan, and it's to rebuild the things that are broken in your life. And I make good on my promises. It may not happen in the timeline that you want it to happen, but it will happen in the perfect time. So 70 years, God says, listen, I'm gonna fulfill my plan because I, I'm gonna give you hope because I can see the future. I know who I'm gonna call. So 70 years later, all of a sudden, the temple starts getting rebuilt and those captives in exile start, oh man, let's go back and worship in the temple. And, and, and the wild thing is this, on the surface level, man, Daniel's prayers were just for the real life. Like you and I pray for things that happen to us in our day-to-day -day life. And Daniel's like, man, if you could just rebuild like the temple, I just wanna go to church. <laughs> if you could just rebuild our city, right? He's thinking those things. He just wants his life back to normal. He's just praying for him and his world, which is a wonderful thing. But then God shows Daniel something. And what a amazing ending to our identity series as we look at the end of Daniel. Daniel chapter nine, we see Daniel reading. Oh my gosh, 70 years, it's incredible. God's starting to rebuild his temple. And then the angel says to Daniel, but listen, I've got an even bigger plan. And Daniel's like, what are you talking about? What could be a better plan than restoring Jerusalem? That's the best plan ever. And he says, listen, I've got an even bigger plan. And let me show you what hope for the future looks like. He said, yes, yeah, 70 years to rebuild the temple, but in seven sets of 70 years, I'm gonna send what the Jewish people called Messiah, the anointed one, the rescuer. Listen, I've got a hope for the future. And not, it's not about a building, it's not about a place, it's gonna be about somebody named Jesus. For all my history, listen, for my history people, for my Bible scholars, people a lot smarter than I did, went back, they figured all this out. <laughs> From the year 445 BC, how many guys said that's a long time ago? You, you count. 69 sevens, seven set, what, that's like 180, 190 years. What's gonna happen, or 480 years, what's gonna happen in that timeline? From 445 to when you count forward, he said, I've got a plan. You know what happened in that time frame? 32 AD. In fact, we got Palm Sunday coming up. 32 AD. Jesus rode a donkey on Palm Sunday into Jerusalem. He said, yeah, in 70 years, I'm gonna rebuild the temple. But in 77s, in like 490 years, the Messiah is gonna come. And let me tell you, when I tell you, I've got a plan for your life. 
I, I, I know the plans I have for you. And let me tell you what the ultimate plan is, peace. But let me tell you where that ultimately comes from. It's gonna come from Jesus. Did you know our ultimate hope today? The ultimate plan that God has for your life is the person of Jesus. We're, we're in this identity series, who are we? Listen, we'll never ever know who we are until we fully come to grasp with whose we are and where Jesus is. And in Jesus, we find our hope, we find our peace, and we find our future in Jesus Christ. Let's check out this video. Man, Daniel had to be patient. He had to practice patience while he was waiting on God's plan. I was thinking about that patience. And you know, you and I, we all face our hardships in life. We all wait on God for certain things. For Stacy and I, one of our things we had to wait on was children, right? We all face hard times, we all face challenges, we all think, God, where are you? Are, are, do you see me? Well, as pastors, we're not immune from that. And I remember our first few years of marriage, we were, man, we were anticipating a child. We were wanting a child. But you ever notice sometimes the more you want something, all of a sudden you start seeing it all around. <laughs> the more you want a child, the more you're like, desire that all of a sudden, Everybody around you is getting pregnant. You guys know what I'm talking about? The more you want to see God's plan unfold in your life, all of a sudden you look around and it seems like everyone else is winning and you go, where is God? Sometimes God wants us to be patient with the plan. So for Stacy and I, we waited. Good thing it wasn't 70 years, but it was seven years. And I... And that was a hard time of waiting, experiencing that infertility and going, good Lord, we're gonna be patient on you. We don't understand the plan. We don't get the plan. And Lord, if we're honest, sometimes I don't know if we like the plan. We're gonna celebrate everyone else when it feels like they're walking in God's promises, but Lord, you're gonna have to bring us some peace, peace that passes understanding. All of a sudden, seven years into us waiting, sometimes patiently, sometimes not patiently. I got a friend uh, out in California. He picked up the phone one day and called me. And he said, hey, how you doing? I said, man, great. He said, hey man, uh, I, I just love you and Stacy so much. You guys are awesome. He's like, I just wanna say a couple things. Number one, I think you guys one day would make great parents. And I was like, Phew. Thank you for noticing, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, man, do you, you like, you like want kids, right? You like want a child. And I was like, yeah. He's like, S like, so you want a child? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you want a child? And I'm like, hey bro, you're just kind of rubbing salt in my wound here, brother. Just chill it out a little bit, right? But, but then I realized something. I was like, wait a second. Are you asking me like in theory or is there like a child he goes no I'm asking if you want a child 
because I'm testing the waters, but also, yeah, there is a child and the child needs a home and they're looking for a mom and a dad if you're interested. I said, what? I said, yeah. I said, wait, 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 wait. You're calling me and asking me if I'd like a child. He, he said, I know this is not normally how it happens. I go, no, it's not. <laughs> After seven years of like patiently waiting on God's plan, I want to show you this little picture. Look at this little picture. 16 years ago, <laughs> this little bundle of joy pops up into our life. I think we got another picture where Stacy joined us for this one. Oh, this was Easter 16 years ago. Isn't that cool? But all of a sudden God reminded me, I have a plan. Just trust me. Will you be patient on the plan? Seven years of waiting, seven years of, Lord, where are you? Do you hear my prayers? And he says, don't worry, I have a plan and it's coming in the future. So, so, so then we're like, well, I guess this is what we do. We just wanna seek God. <laughs> That's how we have a baby, right? <laughs> so we, we brought Makai into our life. He, he, he came into our life and it was incredible. And then Stacy's like, this is wonderful. Let's do it again. And I said, what do you mean? So what did we do? For seven more years, we sought and we prayed. Oh, you guys already got the glimpse there. Seven more years, we had to like pray and go, Lord, you know what we want. <laughs> Lord, help us, please. Lord, we can't do this on our own. Lord, you've got a plan. And all of a sudden, I love from last week, right? What are we supposed to do when we're in a predicament? What are we supposed to do? He said, I want you to be productive. Seven years after Micaiah came into our life, I get a phone call. I am literally under a toilet fixing a leak. That's called being productive. And the hospital says, hey, uh, are you guys open to receiving a child? What? Stacy just looks at me from the other room. She's like, yes, yes, say yes. I said, I got questions. She says, no, he doesn't, say yes. And just a few months ago, man, let me tell you, in those dark nights, when it feels like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling, when you know that God's promised you something, but it has not happened yet. When it feels like, Lord, are you, are you, can you see me? Can you hear me? Lord, it feels like you're asleep at the wheel. I want to look at this. This was a couple months ago, family of four going to a, we went to Elevation Nights of Worship as a family of four. Can I tell you something? as someone who has gone through hard times, as someone who has been disillusioned and frustrated with God's plan, can I encourage you, Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I have a plan for you. And it's a plan to prosper you and bring you peace and wholeness and fruitfulness. And it's a plan for a hope and a future. You may be going through a hard time today, can you be encouraged by God's word? And here's what I wanna do. I wanna encourage you, not just by my story, but I know we got a room full of folks. See, I've been walking with Jesus for about 20 years. Can I tell you that I, I've never seen him forsake me. The Bible says he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. The Bible says that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the end. That's what Jesus says. He says, I see the future and listen, you better not lose hope because I got a plan. No matter how dark the night is, the dawn will come. So here's what I wanna do. If you've been following Jesus for long enough and God has seen you through, God has brought you through something, God has proved himself and he has said, you know, he's been faithful to you. I want us to testify by just a, a round of applause to encourage us. Come on, if you know what I'm talking about.
See, listen to that. If you're going through something right now, I want you to listen to that applause. Those are people that know about his faithfulness. Those are folks that know about his goodness. Those are folks that have walked through some dark times, but they know that the light is at the end of the tunnel. Let's do this this morning. Let's stand. <laughs> he is so good to us this morning. Hey, how do we practice patience? Man, it's putting our trust in God. I love the end of that verse. You know what it says? It says, if you seek me, you will find me. That's one of the biggest things I learned as we walk through our process of God's plan with our life is that you don't seek the plan, you seek the Prince of Peace, right? See, you don't see, you say, well, I got, I got some promises I want God to do in my life. Don't seek the promises because it may not turn out the way you think it will. So you know what you seek instead? You seek Jesus. You seek the Lord. He's got the plan. You seek him. He will let his plan unfold in your life. You don't seek the plan. Seek the Lord. Seek the Prince of Peace. Amen. A lot of ways you could respond today. You could say, well, man, listen. Man, I talk about seeking the Lord. I need to seek the Lord. I'm, I, I, my life is far from him. I've been, I've been trying to find peace in all the wrong places. I've been trying to find peace in all the wrong places and I, I need to get my life straight with God today. That's one of the applications. You could just say, Jesus, I, I need Jesus in my life. For some of you, you say, you know what, Pastor Brad, I know God's promised me some stuff, but I, I'm still on the other side of that promise. It hasn't been fulfilled yet. I'm still waiting. I'm still being, I, I have to be patient. Can I encourage you this morning? Seek the Prince of Peace. Trust in God's will and trust in God's time. You know what? He's never late. He's rarely early, but he's always right on time. Let's close our eyes and pray. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness in our life. If you came into this room today and you say, you know what? I, I, I've been trying to find peace in all the wrong places. I, I've been trying to manufacture happiness. I've been trying to go my own way, but today I'm, I know that I need to repent and I need to say yes to Jesus. If that's you and today is your day of salvation, just simply slip your hand up to the Lord this morning. Say, Pastor Brad, that's me. That's me. I need, I, I need to repent this morning. I need Jesus. I've been looking for peace in the wrong places and I need Jesus this morning. If that's you, simply slip your hand up to him today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the rest of us, he said, I've got a plan is to prosper you, is to bring you peace, to provide hope in a future. It's his absolute amazing love for us that says, I'm gonna provide that future for you. I wonder if we could do what our scripture says this morning, if we could just seek the Lord. The Bible says, listen, I've got your hope, I've got your future, but it's not really about the plan. Don't seek the plan, seek me. It's not about the plan, seek my face. I wonder if we could spend a few minutes and worship him. The Bible says when we seek him, we will find him. I wonder if some people in the room, you say, Lord has brought me through some stuff. I, I, I can testify to God's faithfulness today. I'm gonna worship him. Can we spend a few minutes at the end of service and just worshiping the Lord? No you, shadow come on, let's lift up a voice we just got to listen to. Thank you again for choosing to tune into North Highland Church. I really hope to see you next week. Have a good one.